Today, I'm going to expose the secret world of supercar dealerships. I was wanting to buy a new GT3 RS, please. Have you bought enough cars? <laughs> if you were lucky enough to have the money to buy a luxury special edition supercar like Porsche, Ferrari or Lamborghini, it's not as easy as walking into a dealership and buying the car of your dreams. To purchase these exotic low number cars, you need to be on the list. And today we're going to see how hard it is to get on the list and hopefully purchase one of the best cars Porsche has ever made. Here is the new Porsche GT3 RS and this is a new Porsche 911 GT3 RS. And to confirm just how special this car is, just check out these reactions. <laughs> oh my God, this feels like a bloody racing car to me. On my journey to buy a car, I found a shocking web of dealers potentially misleading their customers. So what is the list? Dealerships have their very best customers. These are people who buy many cars through the year and potentially spend millions of pounds. These big spenders then sometimes get the chance of getting the rare edition low numbered supercars, which are very sought after, but also stand a good chance of not losing money. And sometimes in fact, even making money. These people are carefully handpicked to be real ambassadors of the brand. So what qualifies you to be on this list? You're expected to buy a number of cars and sometimes these cars are less desirable high volume, low end model cars which are most likely to lose a load of cash. This proves they are loyal customers but obviously that comes with a cost to the buyer. So I'm going in store face to face to show the dealer just how serious I am. I was wanting to buy a new GT3 RS please. A new GT3 RS. Um, I don't know what, what's your sort of background with Porsche. Sounds a horrible question doesn't it? Have you bought enough cars? <laughs> is, is, is that the... Is that the... I, I think, yeah, from my understanding is you have to bought like a ridiculous amount of cars to even be sort of put on the list, really. So this guy, way before my time, probably bought six or seven cars off of per year and he's bought for quite a long time as well. Yeah. Um, somebody threw a figure in like £2 million spend or something with the same dealer. So I need to spend £2 million a year to get a slot for a GT3 RS. But there's a catch. Ultimately, we can do everything we can. I wouldn't want to say there's a guarantee on a X amount of numbers or X amount of spend, but. You know, you, you sort of invest in cars, you don't really like prefer and want, and then you still don't get that allocation it's at the hard, end of it. it. Right, let's pause it right there. This is my problem. I think there's people going in with the dream of buying their ultimate car, the 992 GT3 RS. And I think these dealers, are giving the dangling carrot, they're saying, if you buy 10 cars, which will potentially lose hundreds of thousands of pounds, I might get you a car. And they know that there isn't enough cars to go around. They're selling a dream, which is not gonna happen. Okay, great. All right. Thanks ever so much. Thanks for your time. Right, okay. Take care. So it looks like it's gonna be difficult to get this allocation to order a brand new GT3 RS. For now, let's keep trying, but if needed, I've got a secret weapon which should get me that slot. But first, we need to understand more about the system. Now, the question is why? Why are these dealers so protective of these top end models? But of course, it all comes down to one thing, money. The more of the supply they control, the more money they will make. This is when Overs comes into play. So what is Overs? You can see our previous video here to see that in depth. But to put it simple now, it's when you purchase a car from a dealer and the very next day you sell the car for a profit simply because there's a queue of people wanting to buy that very car. So hypothetical numbers, that's Senna, right? Yeah. Like immediately once you bought it, how much could you have flipped it for? I think initially in the US, maybe 300,000 over. Now, that is tax-free cash, maybe even overnight. So the main dealers want to stop this from happening because they don't want people buying these just to flip them. So when you purchase one of these in-demand cars, they can make you sign a contract to say you will not sell the car within six months or even a year, even though it's your car bought with your own money. And the consequences, if you do sell that car early, you'll be blacklisted and you'll be refused any special cars in the future. Some of these cars have already slipped through the net and they are for sale right now. And obviously the owners have been blacklisted. Now these cars are fetching as much as 150,000 pounds over what that car was originally bought for. But that's so risky to buy a car at these inflated prices as they are likely to reduce as more cars come to the market. So personally, I only want to buy a car from a main dealer at the original list price. 
Even though so far I have been rejected, I am determined to buy one of these amazing cars. Now, not having the time to travel up and down the country to see these dealers face to face, I'm gonna hit the phones and the reactions I got were amazing. Right, preparation is key. I have my list of Porsche dealerships, I can find 39, and I've got a green highlighter for all the ones which are gonna sell me a brand new 911 992 GT3 RS at normal list price. Good luck. When we got through to the first main dealer, it looked promising. Which model are you interested in? Uh, it's a GT3 RS. Okay, let me just copy through something sales now. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds promising. Yeah. It's not something, have you got any, like a buying history with us at the minute of a certain amount of cars? No, not really, no. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the same story for all the other dealers. I felt like we were getting nowhere. Is that a specific vehicle that requires an invitation to purchase? Porsche do entice to, to have some form of buying history from a certain centre. We don't take deposits for them. Welcome to Porsche Centre Preston. To Brooklyn, to Guildford, to Tunbridge, South Lakes, to Lux, London, Schley, Sheffield. Right. Okay, let's continue <laughs> on the search. I don't think we're going to need the green pen. Right, we're going Mayfair now. Posh. Going posh. All right, it's, it's not something that, um, especially that sort of uh, ilk of car that we would uh, be able to allocate. Then we can start to, we can start to, um, oh, what was I was going to say, as I was boring the salesman to sleep, we got a call back from one of the dealers. We potentially have got a client who is looking at selling his GT3 RS. We would be looking at circa 365,000, but I suppose mathematically, if you work out a starting your own portfolio and working towards 10 cars, of course, that could still work out your, your best option. What, what do you mean by it's be maybe better than doing your own portfolio price wise? There's an element of loss, obviously, in every single car, isn't there? So, of course, obviously, every car depreciates. Um, so, if you were to buy like, 10 cars, and say, for example, there was a, we bought it in at a certain price, but there was an element of loss in each car. Like anything depreciates, doesn't it? Any car can, can depreciate over the time. So, the over allowance or, or the additional pricing on the GT3 RS may work out advantageous in the fact that, of course, it's, it's less of a loss over the duration and it's a quicker route into it. Right, so I understand what you mean. So, if, if I bought a portfolio of cars which all lost money, that would cost me an amount of money anyway absolutely yes it's ultimately i'd probably think it's going to cost you slightly less to do it this way so he's paid close to two hundred sixty-five thousand pound retail for the car so in theory he's lost more than 100 grand on other cars he's owned so like it this works out maybe cheaper yeah yeah exactly so she's saying that this guy has lost more than 100 grand to have the right to buy this 992 gt3 rs mad no matter how many people we rang we got the same answer so we went to see my good friend who might be able to help us all right i'm good how are you i need your help well that's what i'm here for talk to me i want to buy a porsche okay 911 gt3 rs new one mm -hmm. that's okay. the big pit yep i don't want to be paying overs you don't want to be paying overs. Well, you've gone to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's laugh says it all. It's looking like it's going to be impossible to get one of these cars for list price. So someone who has paid list price, or what they think they've paid list price for a GT3 RS, I guarantee you has paid more than what they would have to pay if they come to buy one from me. Why? Well, because of the list of cars that they've had to lose money in that they don't want. It's okay having a car and losing money in that car if you wanted that car. Yes. But when you don't want a Cross Turismo 4S Taycan because you live in Wiltshire and <laughs> there's nowhere to charge your car, but they've made you have two in the last six months, and now you've got one and your wife's got one and you can't use it, but you think, oh, you know what, I'll just, I'll lose 35% in that car just to give it to Porsche. Calculate, you go home, you calculate all them losses you've made and then tell me if you've paid less than what I'm charging. So I asked Carl about what the salesman had said to me earlier on in the dealership. I was concerned about not being guaranteed to get one of these cars, even if I ticked all the boxes by buying lots of other Porsches. And his answer was absolutely shocking. So I've seen scenarios as well over the years where someone has walked into some dealer at some time and they've bought all the stuff that they want them to do. They've been on the trips that they want them to pay for to go on. Because that's another thing, they invite you to go on a trip around Italy that you have to pay for. 
So that's not a good invite, is it? Um, they've done all this stuff and they've said, right, look, if I'm going to do all this, I need to make sure you're going to hold up your end of the bargain. You need to send me an email and confirm that I am going to get a... Golden egg. GT3 RS, for example. And I've seen situations where that email has been sent and they still don't get it. So there's even paperwork at There's trial. absolutely no guarantee whatsoever. Oh, and by the way, if you think you've got an order slot because you've left a deposit and they've taken your deposit, that means nothing either. It means absolutely nothing. So the dealers are taking deposits off the customers, saying that they're going to get a car, but they are not delivering. It's absolute stupidity. They, they sell you the dream that you're going to get something at list. <laughs> No, you're not going to get it at list. They may as well say, if you buy 30 cars from us, we will give you a GT3 RS for free. <laughs> That's what they may as well say, because it's the same thing. No one gets a GT3 RS at list. It doesn't happen. To understand how frustrating it can be to get one of these cars, we spoke to a long-time loyal Porsche customer. Yeah, so I've been a fan of Porsche all my life and I've, I've started owning them through the last seven years probably. With me always wanting a GT3 RS, I went to my local dealer and said, what do I need to do to secure a slot? And they said, better history with buying from us and not promised, but fairly convinced that I was secured a slot. Brought X amount of different models for myself. Over time, they all, they've all depreciated and lost quite a lot of money. I wasn't promised a car 100%. Um, however, being told what I needed to do to get a, get a slot on a car and still in the outcome not getting a car was really frustrating so i've spent obviously thousands on the tours that you offered to go on with buying the cars i bought the mountain bike the porsche mountain bike and i even brought the seven thousand pound plastic porsche watch purely to try and get me this build slot you go on piston heads and they're all for sale at selling at wayovers and it just makes me think i would have had that car for pure enjoyment not to make money on when I, whenever going to porsche no one was like like pushing to, for me to buy these things. I just, I always wanted a GT3 RS and I just thought buying all of these like add-ons as such would get me that build slot that I, I always wanted. Putting all things aside, even if you did all the things you're asked to get on that list, another potential flaw is the salesman. The salesman leaves that you've had a relationship with and bought all these cars. If he gets sacked tomorrow, then all of a sudden Mark McCann is who? Sorry, who do you normally deal with? Oh, I deal with Graham. Graham sorry, Graham's not here no more. And then the new guy comes in who's got a relationship with people he's worked for him in the past. So he's bringing his own VIP list. You're relying on the salesman who you're dealing with having a firm position in the company to get what you want. Now, if you ask me, that's, um, that's a dangerous game. So why are manufacturers limiting production numbers on these awesome top-end ultimate models? Well, it's probably not the reason you thought it was. People get attracted to the brand. That's a special thing that that brand makes and what other special things do they make? You know what, the next GT3 RS, I wanna get one of them. I better get start buying. I'm gonna buy a Carrera, a GTS, Panamera. So that a car Macan. has a knock-on effect. That car so earns them more money because it sells their other cars. And then they've got five cars they've sold, five cars they've got profit, they've got five cars then being serviced, five cars being warranted. Mm -hmm. I suppose that just snowballs to make the whole brand work. Five cars that they make you take finance out on because some manufacturers make you take finance out. You have to have finance. You have to have the finance. You have to because they need to earn more money from you. So here's a perfect example of how they sell you the dream that don't really work out sometimes. A Ferrari SF90. So we have seen that dealerships can be unfair by giving their customers false hope. Now, this next story is a lot more than that. It's just outright unfair. The SF90, just like the GT3 RS, is a flagship amazing car, and the owners need to have had a certain amount of buying history to get that build slot. But of course, those cars are likely to have lost money along the way. That car is now for sale with me with 2,000 miles at 390,000. That's a hundred, nearly 140,000 loss. On just that one? On just that car to go with the other probably 140,000 loss that he's had on the other so five or six. So there's 280 grams worth of loss of the car, which was going to be a money maker. But this gets better. I'm not stopped yet. Shortly after the guy had sold his SF90, they released an even better model called the SF90 XX, which of course, naturally, he wanted one of those. Call it my Ferrari dealer. I'd like an SF90 XX, please. Well, Carl, there's a problem. You need to have an SF90. But I had an SF90. I bought it from you for full money, and I sold it back to you to lose 100,000 or more. Yeah, but Ferrari stipulate, if you don't physically have one at the minute, you place the order for the XX, you don't get one. 
So now you've got to go and buy another one. If you think that's ridiculous, it gets even worse than that. Let's pretend that I have been lucky enough to get offered a GT3 RS from the main dealer. To get this invite, I've already lost £100,000 on 10 cars which I needed to buy to get my chance of the slot. But now I have my new GT3 RS which is instantly worth £100,000 more than I've just paid. So surely that equals everything out. Nope. Then they say, okay, well you have to sell it back to us. Now I'm there offering 100,000 plus over list. If I bring it to you. And you bring it to me. And they say, well, you know, if you want to continue doing business with us, you've got to sell it back to us at list price. List? List or not very much over, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it all, I've seen and it then, all. And then they're still charged the 100 over. Yeah, then they can sell it for over. So, so they can do 80 grand. They're a bit hypocritical because if you're not allowed to sell it for over, but they are. What I'm offering you is this. You tell me what color you want. I'll sell you a car at market price when you're finished. I'll buy it back. There's no obligations to buy other cars. There's no obligations to not sell the car because I'm gonna sue you. You can do whatever you want. You know why? Because it's yours and that's what you should be able to do. And you know what? You no, know if you sold it to somebody else, you're still welcome to come back here and buy another car. I'll never blacklist you. <laughs> so I think it's obvious I'm not gonna get a car from a Porsche dealership at list price unless I have a previous buying history that they are looking for. And that's where I've got an ace up my sleeve. I have had a fair few Porsches in the past. Now, does that class as buying history? These cars have actually totaled over a million pounds. So maybe, just maybe, this is enough to use as leverage to get one of these new cars. So this is our last chance. We're gonna go face to face and I'm gonna give it Billy Big Beans. I'm gonna try everything I can to try and get an allocation. This is it, I'm all in. But when I listed these cars to the salesman. Yeah, I've had, I've had a few, like recently I had a 911 Targa. I've had a couple of Carrera GTs, like a 993, a 997. So I've had, I've had quite a few. It literally made no difference. A million pounds and yep, no difference. Invitation only car. Right. Uh, sorry to come across bluntly, I don't want to waste your time, but yeah, <laughs> it's just to give you the honest answer basically, because we have people on a daily basis coming out for, for GT3 RS. Thanks for your effort, yeah, nice no to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Okay, take care. Bye, bye, bye. Basically, no matter how hard you or me work, you are not going to be able to buy a GT3 RS at the price you are supposed to. The system's flawed. Basically, to even be considered for a slot, you have to spend a load of money in these dealerships. But if you do work at Porsche and you can get me in the back door, drop us a message on Instagram, MarkMcCann64. See you next Tuesday, 6pm.